you today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are thoroughly, thoroughly happy to have you joining us today. And I was praying about our time together and God dropped a verse in my heart to encourage you with. And actually it's from my morning prayer time just today. And it's Psalms 90 verse 17. And it says, let the favor of the Lord be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. And my prayer for you today is that God's favor is on you and that you know that. Sometimes God's favor is on us and we just kind of ignore it and don't really recognize it. But God's favor is on you. And when the favor of God is on you, I'm telling you, things happen that are completely unexpected, amazing surprises, fantastic opportunities. So if you're struggling with any area of your life where you need the favor of God, hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that you'll recognize God's favor and that God's favor will overwhelm those areas and needs that you have. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And mom, I'm so excited. We have literally one of my favorite people I in the agree. whole world, Deborah Pagay. Yay! Bless you, Love Deborah. Good to be you here. With us. Oh my goodness, so fun! You so, guys are my favorites too. Yeah, <laughs> nice. You so, said the right thing. A lot of love everywhere yeah. here, right? Yeah, yeah. There is. And uh, Deborah, you have this amazing book. I love this book. Change your attitude, change your life. Now, before we get going too far, you need to get this book. I'm telling you, it will turn your life around because much of the problem that we have in our lives deals with our attitude. And so get on the phone, get on the website, not only get one for yourself, but I would say get three, get five, get 10, give them for your, your book club, your small group at your church, all kinds of places. This is a tremendous resource that has the potential to 100% revolutionize your life. So grab a whole bunch of them and pass them out to your friends, but change your attitude, change your life. Yes, That's attitude. That's a big deal. It, it's a big deal. And I want to just define attitude. It's your mindset. And I always say I love that word mindset because it means what you set your mind on. Yep. But it's a, your perspective, your outlook on life. And Marilyn said it. She said um, your attitude determines your altitude. And it really does. How how you go. You know. So I want to I want to make sure people get this today, that we have to develop a certain mindset towards life. And it will change our life when we just when we decide and uh, that all things are working together for our good, that we're surrounded with favor. I love how you started the program off with that scripture on favor, because listen, every righteous person, every person who's in right standing with God is surrounded with favor like a shield. So so that's an attitude you can have when you go into an interview, when you go anywhere, when in any endeavor, you have to begin to say, I'm surrounded with favor like a shield. That's an attitude, that's a mindset, that's a divine perspective. Yeah. So as we go through these 30 attitudes, and I say in 30 days, because I want to make sure that people get intentional about it, to say, okay, for the next 30 days, and one of my challenges right now is not to be critical for the next 30 days. <laughs> Nice. I will not evaluate anybody's choices, behaviors, or any of that. I'm just going to, you know, pray for them if, it, if I perceive it to be a wrong choice. But I'm not going to always evaluate people's choice of clothes. Like, oh, white shoes after Labor Day? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, we do that. It can yeah, be so I subtle. Know. Simple little things. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you remember you reap what you sow. So I don't, I don't want to reap some of that stuff. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But, you know, sometimes people think, I, I found this interesting. One of my friends said to me, I'm not good at change. And, and that kind of reflects an attitude, a mindset, a thinking with change. And yeah. sometimes we struggle not only with change, but there's a sense that there's not enough. Okay, I like it when people say I'm not good at something. Because, listen, nobody's good at anything. Any, if you get an attitude that apart from God you can do nothing, see, that's a mindset. So no matter what you think you're not good at, you're not good at it. But you can do everything when you allow him to do it through you. Because there are some people I am, quote, in the natural, I'm not good at interacting with people who talk really loud. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't stand people who are just like really loud. But I'm thinking, I can do this. I can do this. I don't tell myself, oh, I just can't be around people like that. Or I just, can't. I can, I can, I can do all things. That's a mindset. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so I'll say, Lord, let me love that person with your love. Flow through me right now and give me the acceptance to love that person. Yeah. I can do it. Nice. And see, you share also a Bible example with yes. each of these attitudes I do. that I think is so helpful. And that's why we encourage you to get the book because this is not the power of positive thinking. Nope. This is far more. This is the Word of God that absolutely creates things. When you get into a godly attitude, it's a creative attitude. That's why Sarah and I say, you got to get the book and get more than one. Now, I'm going to ask you something, because this okay. is an interesting mindset that my dad had. 
My dad was born in 1925, grew up in the Depression era, and, and, and Ethel was a little bit like this as Very. well, your aunt, my great aunt. Yeah. And uh, they had this deal where there was never enough. Ooh. I mean, you know those TV shows that talk about hoarding? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and my dad, I mean, when my dad died, he had well over 400 chairs to cane that, <laughs> I mean, you I have no like idea. I you like have chairs. Right, yeah. and he would go to garage sales and he would buy flour, you know, for 10 cents, but it was half opened, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it was a bargain. It was a deal. Yeah. But there was this hoarding sense to him. Now, that's kind of a sketchy attitude. Walk me through how you overcome some of that. Well, and some people call that a scarcity mindset, but sometimes it's our experiences just cause us to behave a certain way. And so what that could have been a fear of, of having scarcity, you know, and sometimes when we save, save, save like that and never spend, 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 then it's, it's, it's a mindset. But we can have a scarcity mindset not only towards things, we can have a scarcity mindset toward our relationships. I, I was telling uh, Marilyn earlier about when I started writing and I had written a few books, I invited several people to my house to um, share the information because sometimes we don't share information. We don't share the recipe, let somebody else get it and you know, and, mm -hmm. and now people are gonna like them better than they like ours or whatever, you know. And so we can have that scarcity mindset. And so in the book I talk about the fact that recognize when you're having a scarcity mindset to say there's not enough resource out there. Even in your relationships with a friend, you have a friend, you introduce them to another friend and they appear to be getting closer than two of you and then you start to feel intimidated. Oh, that's a scarcity mindset. Some mothers feel like they can't share their children. I don't want you to love your spouse more than you love me. That's a scarcity mindset. So we want to make sure that we call it what it is, be truthful in the inward parts. <laughs> that's what David said. Yeah. Lord, you desire truth in the inward parts. I'm always auditing myself. Okay, what's, what do you really feel? You know, and if, is, is that a scarcity mindset? What's really working here? So we just got to be mindful of that. Take it to the altar and say, God, help me. And this is what I say. To change an attitude, just start acting the opposite way. That's good. Just start well, acting the opposite book. way. Yes. Woo! You see, because, that's hot. because feelings follow actions. You start acting a certain way. Pretty soon the emotion will catch up with it. That's so I'll so just good. act like I don't have a scarcity mindset. I do. I just, if you do that, Trust me, it's going to work. If you, if, you, if you think you've fallen out of love with your husband, <laughs> if you start to act like you did when you first got married, something's going to change. It will. That's really good. I that agree. is really good. And the I thing, agree. too, is there's so much scarcity mindset. And, I, you know, I think about America, and I know you've been overseas in lots yes. of different countries, and, and sometimes in America we have this scarcity mindset. I'm like, <laughs> That's a little bit of a, that's a leap for me because I can't get there. Because you know how many people in the world oh live off goodness. of less than $2 a day. Oh, my goodness. You know that. Oh, it's but we hard. Can, yeah, and, and sometimes we'll think, we, we, you know, if you just count your blessings, get, out, get sure. outside of your little box and look at what other people are doing and, and the other things that people just don't have, then you will find yourself being more grateful. That's why I think when we went to China with you last year, yeah. oh, man, that was awesome. You know, when you get up close and personal and see people who live in, in small spaces and you won't complain about your bathroom because the two sinks are too close together. <laughs> <laughs> you develop a whole new attitude, sure. a whole new attitude. You'll be yeah. glad you have a bathroom. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and that gets into praising God, doesn't it? Oh, it does. For what you do have. Yes, yes. May, listing in your mind what you have. Yes. I love that. So you want a grateful attitude. And yes. that's important. Always be grateful. Find something to be grateful for. Sure. Especially when you're surrounded with people who are complaining, which is so contagious. Then you can find something to be grateful for. You don't have to be a walking Bible, but if you're in line at the bank and somebody's complaining about how slow the line is, you, you can be grateful that you, you have money in the bank. Whoa. <laughs> exactly. Serious. You know, or complaining about work. You know, I hate this job. I, I knew somebody who was complaining about the fact that he hated his job. And I say, now say that very slowly. You hate your job. That means you have a job <laughs> to hate. Sure. <laughs> you know? So let's learn how to, how, you know, be grateful, have a grateful mentality. But let me tell you about a couple of these other attitudes. This impatient attitude. Right. I was going to ask you that because oh. I saw that in here. Impatient. Yes. Oh my goodness, it's not quick enough. Microwave I, mindset. I know, and this is, the, this is the day. We talk in sound bites. I took a class on how to make, how to do media uh, interviews it quickly. You just gotta do it really fast. Because <laughs> nobody wants the long version. That's why we, we like Twitter. Because you say, say it really fast. But listen, we gotta be patient. Because sometimes there are some people that you force them to operate on a level that they're not comfortable with when you're impatient. And this is what I know. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. It is produced in us by the Spirit. You can't be patient in your own strength. 
because people, there will be people who will tell you the long version of the story, and you want to say, can you just quit circling the airport and land that airplane? <laughs> yeah. But we know that patience is a virtue. The Bible says, in your patience, you possess your soul. Right. And so we want to learn how to be patient. And you know what? Again, you say, Holy Spirit, come in, produce that fruit in me so that I can be a patient person and have a patient mindset. Right. That people know I'll listen to them. And Isaiah 40, verse 31, those who wait on the Lord Ooh. will renew their strength. Yes. And the truth of it is, the impatience cuts short the intimacy. It does. Yes, it does. But I like that. You said they shall renew their strength. Strength to do what? To even be more patient. Exactly. <laughs> strength for the distance. Exactly. Yeah. So we and can do to that. be present. Because when you're impatient, you're not really there. You, you've yeah. already moved on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And then you're not really engaging and not really connecting. And there's no substance. The relationship gets really, really shallow and frothy and empty. Absolutely. That's why we have to intentionally set aside time to listen to each other. My husband and I just celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary. And we like to sit and talk and just say, so what are you thinking? And how did you feel about that? Rather than just like, you know, okay, I'll see you this afternoon. We'll see you working. Another. You know, so we got to learn how to do that and to listen to our friends. And, you know, and that's not always possible. But, the, you know, sometimes you got to just take the time, though, and listen to somebody. Sure, yes. sure. And you talk about that all of this and there's a whole boatload of attitudes in here that you talk through and we're just hitting some of the hot spots yes. for it, the highlights of it but talking about valuing others talking about being pleasant about being happy for somebody else's good fortune oh, about yes. humility about tolerance so hop on the phone get at least five of these I'm serious get at least five because you know how many people in your life will I give this 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 you got small groups you got book clubs you got neighbors you got people in your apartment complex this would just be a tremendous blessing in their life. So get on the phone, get on the website, grab a whole boatload of these because they will be a tremendous help and assistance to you. Do you ever find yourself entertaining negative thoughts? The Bible says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Is it time for an attitude adjustment? For your gift of $29, you'll receive Deborah P. Gay's book, Choose Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Learn how your words affect every area of your life. Through Bible-based principles, you'll learn how to recognize counterproductive behaviors and walk towards a path of personal growth. Discover how to let go of anger, focus on the needs of others, walk in humility, and have healthy relationships. You'll also receive Maryland's Renew Your Mind booklet. Learn how reading specific scriptures out loud can help you transform your thoughts from negative to positive and change your life for the better. In addition, you'll receive a Peace and Joy Scripture card that you can read daily to remind you to think positive thoughts. Empower yourself to walk in freedom by renewing your mind. Call or click today. Phnom Penh, Cambodia has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Nightcare, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Nightcare from Saving Moses. Have you ever felt like a victim? Did you ever notice when you get into that? I mean, you can really sing a song on it. Yeah, I was a victim in this. I was a victim in that. I was a victim in this. And what it does to you, it's like it paralyzes you. It is a really serious thing. And it's very important that we not stay in that box. That has a lid on it, can keep you down when God wants to take the lid off and have you rise. And that's why I want you to get this book. Because every one of you, there have been times when, well, everything is against me. You know, Job said all that, but thank God he came out of that. And thank God you share about the opposite of that in this book that everybody's going to get. 
Absolutely. I think I could say I, I, I could have been a victim. I, I, in, in, in the culture, there's this saying that you, if you, you, there are three strikes against you. If you're a woman, you're a black woman, <laughs> and you're a dark-skinned black woman. <laughs> Wow. Yes, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you know, oh, three, yeah. I don't say I have three strikes against me. I have three things in my favor, exactly. you know, because that, that makes me different. Exactly. And I have never been, and I grew up in the deep south, but I have never felt like I was a victim of racism. I really haven't because I, I listen, I have memorized the Bible since I was like about 15 or whatever. But there is a scripture that says, behold, the Lord has purposed and who can thwart him? That's Isaiah 14, 27. I live with that. Behold, the Lord has purposed. Who can thwart him? His hand is outstretched. Who can turn it back? When God has determined that something is for me, who can say, no, 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 no. I, I have not been a victim. And there, have, there, were, there were things that happened that made it look like I was being a victim. I think I'm a writer today because of a situation that happened when I was in college. Uh, the teacher called me in and he said, you and Miss Blank Blank have tied for the A in the class. And we, you have to be re-examined to see which one of you would get the A. And I, I got the B. But you know what? From then, then on, I made sure I, I knew how to write really well. And I studied grammar and all of that. I think I'm a writer today because of that. Now, I, I majored in accounting, but I think because of that. So, see, nobody has a reason to feel like they're a victim. No, you're not a victim. As Joel Osteen says, you're a victor. Right. <laughs> really. So exactly. you don't have to have a victim mindset. If only my husband had been more supportive. I, I have a friend uh, or somebody who wanted to write. And she said, but I had small children. The children are now 30. I had small children, and I could have written books, but I, I had. Listen, okay, now, that was then. Come on, stop looking for excuses to stay mediocre or right. not to reach your goals. Just go on and just get started. Stop procrastinating. Nobody has to be a victim. And we're not minimizing people who have been victim of rape and all of that. But as we said earlier, all things are working together for your good. So you got to find the good in it and stop having this mindset that, woe is me, I can't go forward, I am just a victim of circumstances, because you really aren't. Right. And, and the Bible doesn't teach that we're victims. Never. The Bible teaches that we are victors. And you talk, and what I love about your book here is you take the Bible, you take Bible principles, and you bring them into daily living and how we think on a daily level. So yes. hop on the phone, get on the website. You're going to want to get at least five of these. You're like, you keep saying that. Well, it's absolutely the truth because you know hundreds of people in your life, or at least 50, that kind of have some attitude challenges, including yourself, probably your kids, maybe your husband, maybe your parents, some co-workers, you know, it's a, or people at school, fellow students. I'm telling you, this will be a tremendous investment in their life and also to help you ultimately, to help you in your life as well. And one of the things you talk about in this book as well is you talk about defiant. Yes, yeah, so you find a, you find defiance with, throughout our culture. Nobody wants to submit to authority. You know, I'm I'm, I'm really big on this. If if you work in an, a, in a corporation, you know, I say, listen, whatever the boss tells you to do, that's your job. Whether and unless it's illegal or immoral, you say yes. Right. <laughs> you say yes, and I'm amazed at people who will rise up and like I don't care. And you, I'm like, then you wonder why you got fired. <laughs> Come on. Right. Right. Authority comes from God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Is that right, Marilyn? A absolutely. <laughs> so you have to submit to authority. So whatever that authority is, even in the home. Now, I know this is going to go over like a skunk at a picnic, but we have a lot of wives who won't submit to husbands. Oh, <laughs> right. right. Because they don't think they're worthy. God didn't mm. say submit to them if they are worthy. He just said to submit. Exactly. You know, and there's nothing like interceding for a man who is, quote, not worthy in your eyes to be submitted to. But I, I learned this early on because I had some really good mentors. Once my, uh, my, my husband and I were traveling in the car, she was in the car with us, and he made a wrong turn. And I'm, no, you should have gone that way. And I'm going like, oh, if you just listen to me. And she says, be quiet. You're lost together. <laughs> I like that. I do. Oh, You're I lost love together. It. together. All right? And I'm like, ah! But you know what? I learned that to submit, and it's my joy to submit. And I tell him that. It's my joy to submit. I don't care how many TV shows I do, how many books I write. I love submitting to this man, and I like him to know that. It, and, and listen, and because of him, he convinced me to quit my job and do this full time. I know women who, would have, who, who wouldn't have done that. I didn't go to school all these years to be an accountant to come out and start writing books. Like, ah! This is scary. But he said, I believe God is telling us to do this. Mm -hmm. And so it's been my joy to submit. And when you do it God's way, you get God's results. And God will change your mate often too. Absolutely. I remember Wally didn't want to buy a house. We lived in this house 31 years. God gave us this house. I said he has more than one. 
And the Lord, <laughs> he just, and the Lord said to me, if you would just leave this to me, I could do this. And so I just left it alone. I'm happy in this house. If I live here another 31 years, wonderful. And one day he said to me, I've always opposed moving. It's time to move. Amazing. Isn't it amazing what God does when we get when our fight submit. the battle on your knees mm. and not with your mouth? <laughs> totally. This will help you. You say, well, you don't know how ugly my husband is. No, I don't. But I know how big God is. And I know when we do the Bible attitudes, mm, it is absolutely wonderful. you got to have the book. You know, I was thinking, and I, I kind of coach my kids on this. And I tell them, look, if you have a difficult time submitting to me as your leader, what makes you think you can submit to God? Mm. If you have a hard time submitting to me, flesh mm -hmm. and blood, and I'm in your face. Yes, <laughs> I'm yes. telling you, yes. blah, blah, blah. How on earth do you think you're going to obey God whom you can't see? Absolutely. You can't like overtly hear, smell, touch, feel, hug. You know he loves you, but yes. I think uh, that God puts authority in our lives for the simple purpose of practicing submission to God as our ultimate authority. Absolutely, because when you submit, then you're denying self. You're saying, okay, self, you're gonna, we're going to do it God's way. Right. I see people do that in church. The pastor will call for a fast or tell everybody to do something. And now, and now I hear people who will say, oh, no, I'm not doing that one. I'm doing my own version. <laughs> thinking, what happened to submitting to authority? You know, it's not like it's just blind obedience. You know, I'm, we're, none of that kind of stuff. But you, listen, if you practice doing it God's way, you're going to reap that. Sure. You're going to reap that. So, sure. you know, you'll wonder why your children are rebelling. You know, maybe you're, you know, maybe you're having the pastor for, for lunch <laughs> in that sense of me and talking about him sure. all the time. So you just don't want to do that. You know, want to practice submission. Sure. So I'll do that. I, I will deliberately, I'm not kidding. I can be up against the greatest deadline. And if, my, if I know my husband wants chili or whatever, I stop and make the chili. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. do. And then God honors it. I can get stuff done faster. He really does. Totally good. You know, you may be watching and I just encourage you, if you're struggling in an area of your life of submission, or maybe you're like, oh my goodness, this is the whole thing. We want to pray for you. Get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would really, really help you to have victory over that attitude and that struggle. And, you know, the last thing I wanted to kind of throw out and, and ask you about is a controlling attitude. Because you talk about that in this as well, and it's really powerful. Yes, well, I've seen women get together and they say, oh, we all have control issues. <laughs> Where the, no, Everybody has to do what you say, you know, just because you want to be in charge. You can't stand for anybody else to give you input. One of the things we can learn to do is to be teachable, to learn how to listen to other people. We're not the only person who knows how to do something. No, they may not do it the way I do it, but if you practice not being so controlling, especially women, you know, you find this little girls are bossy from early on, so it's in our nature, you know, it's in our nature to tell everybody what to do, you know, so you're going to have to just catch yourself and, and listen to yourself. And if you find yourself doing most of the talking or saying you should, when you find yourself always saying you should, that means you may have a controlling attitude because you're not listening what any other in, the input that anybody else has. Man, that's powerful. I love it. <laughs> I love what changing attitudes, biblical, doing a biblical attitude can do. You know, I have found sometimes when I know I'm going to meet a really rough situation, before I go, I say, I just love people and people love me. <laughs> and even saying that, helps me get out of, uh, 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 they're not Christians, they do this wrong. But this is 30 attitudes, 30, 30 days. You say, I, I don't have 30 bad attitudes. I have a gut feeling you do. So be sure you get this book. And thank you for being with thank us. Thank you so wonderful much. wonderful to have you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank Love you. you so much. Do you ever find yourself entertaining negative thoughts? The Bible says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Is it time for an attitude adjustment? For your gift of $29, you'll receive Deborah P. Gay's book, Choose Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Learn how your words affect every area of your life. Through Bible-based principles, you'll learn how to recognize counterproductive behaviors and walk towards a path of personal growth. Discover how to let go of anger. Focus on the needs of others. Walk in humility and have healthy relationships. You'll also receive Maryland's Renew Your Mind booklet. Learn how reading specific scriptures out loud can help you transform your thoughts from negative to positive and change your life for the better. 
In addition, you'll receive a Peace and Joy Scripture card that you can read daily to remind you to think positive thoughts. Empower yourself to walk in freedom by renewing your mind. Call or click today. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Night care from Saving Moses. Have you ever had stress or anxiety or worry or pressure? And sometimes you just, you just can't seem to breathe. It's like you're almost suffocating and drowning in this stuff. And I want to encourage you today that God wants to set you free from that stress, pressure, and anxiety. And I love what Paul says in Philippians 4, verse 6. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer supplication, let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And I want to pray this for you today, that the peace of God would come into your heart and repel anxiety, repel worry, repel stress, and all this stuff that gets you so frenzied that you would exchange that for the peace of God. Why don't you get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you just for a brief minute right here and encourage you as well to hop on the phone. Father, I pray for each person watching right now. And I stretch out my faith, my hand to them, God, that they would absolutely experience your peace. I pray that they would make the divine exchange, give to you their stress and anxiety and receive from you your peace in exchange. Thank you, Father, for guarding our hearts and minds with your peace in Jesus' name. Amen. I know this is totally a powerful, powerful principle that God has for us, that God stills the storms. He brings peace where there's been chaos. He brings serenity where there's been stress, that God absolutely redeems the stuff. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you, that God would give you a peaceful mind, full of peace, and not prone to anxiety, not prone to stress, not prone to worry, not picking that stuff up, but rather continually going after the peace of God for us today. 